Wow, hi YouTube. Um, this is going to be Roach's reply. This is a, a couple of uh, quick replies to specific questions that people have been asking me. This was my little pot belly stove that I made. Uh, pretty much finished now. Put a little latch on it. It's had the uh, heat resistant um, black engine paint. Uh, put a handle on it. The handle is off of a um, five gallon paint tin, you know, and I've just put a little key ring so that I can hang it up. So, greatest thing about this then is it can be used as a, um, a heater, it can be used as an oven, and uh, it can be used to cook on. And I'm just going to uh, do a little bit of lunch. I'm gonna have some garlic mushrooms on toast, and hopefully I'll be cooking them with this little uh, burner. So, I'll just show you quickly what I use for my own sort of DIY fire lighters. And uh, I'll get this sparked up, and we'll get some food on. And then I'll address the other couple of points that people have raised and wanted uh, answers to. So this is how I make my uh, DIY firelight. That's all I do is I use the, the lint out of the dryer, put it in a bag with some Vaseline. I bought a big pot of Vaseline about 18 months ago. But uh, a blob of Vaseline in a plastic bag, put the lint out the dryer in it, mix it up, and that's your DIY firelighters for when you go out in the field. They are absolutely brilliant and of course, pretty much free. So that's what my uh, bag looks like. Like I say, just a big blob of Vaseline in a plastic bag. That's where all the um, lint from the dryer goes and that's my um, sort of DIY fire lighter um, balls, really. The other thing that I do is when they're in season, when they're all over the ground, I normally pick up a couple of boxes, a couple of bags of uh, pine cones. So pine cones have got pine oil in them. There you kindling, there you fire lighters. Your fire's pretty much lit. Let's go and light that little stove up. So, um, like I say, this is the lint out of the dryer. Just uh, take a couple of blobs. If there's an easy way to do something, I recommend that you do it. Queen. That's a fire pretty much on its way. A little bit of kindling on top of that and we're fixed. So that's a pretty straightforward little uh, fire lighting technique. Like I say, lint a bit of uh, Vaseline out of your dryer and pick up some pine cones next time you're out. That's you sorted. So the other thing I've done, I uh, put a handle on the uh, little potbelly stove. It's just a handle off of a five gallon um, uh, tin of um, emulsion paint, you know, that I've just drilled two holes in the side of the stove. Obviously you have to find the point of balance and I put a key ring through it. So I've kept the plastic ring so I can pick it up if it's hot. But the key ring just enables me to hang the stove, which is what I'm going to do now. Okay, another little advantage is you can hang it from a tree, but um uh, if you're in a pine forest, you know, you've got pine roots, pine roots have pine resin in them, uh, maybe there's peat underfoot uh, and peat burns underground as most people know. So in the summer, if there's a fire risk in the forest and we can't light um, sort of naked flames, it's also a great way of containing your fire, you know, and I have hopes of uh, using it for exactly that. But um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to throw some uh, garlic mushrooms on the top and see if we can't uh, cook those up for a bit of lunch. Okay, so there's our ingredients. A little bit of garlic oil. A few mushrooms. All I've done is just wash them. You know, kind of, uh, you know, really simply. 
Heating the mushrooms in the pan should uh, be tickety boo, that should taught us how to treat. There we go, let's get them on. Oh, I reckon 15, 15 minutes they'll be done. Going to knock up a little bit of toast and come straight back. So I'm cheating a bit here, but I just popped into the house to get a plate. Uh, my favourite brown sauce. I'm going to do a bit of toast. That's going to be our lunch. Okay, so I had a uh, question from a guy called uh, Martin Farrell, and he said, uh, if you were leaving the house for the last time, what uh, knife and axe would you take? Implying that I wouldn't take the um, cold steel trail hawk, and uh, he's right. But, I mean, that, that's um, moving the goalposts, but uh, I'll answer it for you anyway, Martin. My axe if I was uh, leaving the house for the last time I would take this three-quarter length uh, forest axe now it's nothing special I bought this at my local kind of DIY hardware store it's a uh, two two and a half pound axe comes with a little sheath it's got this sort of uh, rubber sleeve that protects the cutting edge uh, hickory handles like I say three-quarter length this is big enough to fell a tree but it's also um, I think the biggest thing that I could carry um, comfortably you know so like I say um, nothing um, you know amazing it's not a kind of uh, um, you know reputable kind of first-class axe I have had this quite a long time it's um, very good at uh, what it does you know and um, can't really see it letting me down so this lives in the back door of my truck I'm assuming that I'm leaving home in the car so this is the axe that I would have with me so as for taking one knife I'd have to turn around and say really I'd be taking my own this is my uh, kind of roach knife um, really fortunate you know you have to put a positive spin on negative experiences but uh, the time that I spent developing uh, and selling Chris Kane survival knives I was obviously uh, on the inside track with regards to the manufacturers so I had a uh, tour of the factory I got a, a uh, in-depth knowledge of how the knives were manufactured what they were made of the manufacturing process um, I benefited really from kind of eight years development that uh, uh, Chris had taken on and I've um, come up with my own knives um, pretty much made of uh, exactly the same steel very similar manufacturing processes um, but this is my spin on one knife so we've got our heavy duty leather sheath that I really like kind of protects the blade I went for the uh, dangler because I really like that it's quite a long knife so when you sit down it doesn't kind of dig into your side this is Roach's very own knife you're probably uh, the first people to see it I've been developing this for the last uh, maybe six or eight months uh, it's a set of three so um, this is my kind of um, um, interpretation of a survival tool um, there is a bushcraft knife that is um, a standard kind of bushcraft knife size uh, exactly the same thing really just slightly smaller and there is also a neck knife so there's a set of three I'll give you some close-up photographs of them so you can see exactly what I've uh, been working on and developing I've been using it extensively in the woods for the last eight months I've done pretty much everything you can imagine I've sort of felled trees and I have um, processed small game you know the way you process small game with a big knife like this 
is you uh, got to have a um, lanyard. Put the lanyard around your arm, just up past your elbow. And now the weight of the knife is taken by your by your upper arm, and now you can use this as a very skilled, almost uh, scalpel-like blade. So the end of this blade is kind of um, scalpel, razor sharp. Then the the um, uh, blade differs slightly in the middle, so the belly of the knife is more suited to uh, heavy chopping. And again, right up by the hilt, as you would kind of choke up on it, it's incredibly sharp for um, uh, fine carving. You know, but one knife to leave the house with, this is the one that I take. I think the mushrooms are done, let's have some like Wow, so the other question that I had from uh, Taffy Apple Iffy was uh, could we have a look inside your 24 hour belt kit that I had hanging on a tree in my last uh, um, Trailhawk video and the answer is uh, absolutely Taffy. What I'll do is I'll crack it open for you uh, probably in a couple of uh, videos time if that's okay but I'll give you a um, uh, rundown on what's in it and uh, how much it all weighs. Well, that's my little bit of lunch in the garden. Garlic mushrooms, bit of toast, brown sauce. So I just wanted to show you that I I did get the potbelly stove finished, and uh, as you can see, it's, uh, it works pretty well. You know, either you could hang it from a tree if there was a fire risk in the forest, it, it encloses your um, fire. You can cook on it, it is a little heater, and if you uh, wanted to, you could place it on an open fire and cook in it uh, and use it as an oven. So that was uh, pretty much everything that I had in mind for it. Um, Looks like I'm probably going to have to give it another coat of uh, heat resistant paint, but uh, a little bit of a rub down and another coat of paint. But uh, apart from that, I'm quite pleased with it. Um, this has been Roach's reply. Just going to talk you through what I've got in mind for the uh, Blizzard sleeping bag film that I uh, mentioned before. But before I do that, Gonna finish this little bit of lunch. Wow, so that was just what the doctor ordered. Lovely bit of lunch, garlic mushrooms on toast. What could be simpler? Uh, I've got the Blizzard products here, ready for the, uh, the next video. going to be putting three products on the table so we've got the blizzard survival jacket now this is uh, about a little bit a little bit smaller than a postcard it's about an uh, inch and three quarters two inches thick vacuum packed and it's a um, jacket very simply but um, this particular uh, blizzard survival jacket is um, in all of the uh, um, Apache helicopter gunship uh, flight crew survival kits predominantly um, what happened was the US military and the uh, United States Air Force bought all of Blizzard Survival's production um, and uh, only over the last you know two or three years probably have they started to up uh, production so that they can sell to people like ourselves but the US military bought everything that Blizzard came out with and they do have um, distribution in the US uh, I can't remember the name of the company off my head, but they're a pharmaceutical company. They have US distribution. Um, so that's the Blizzard Survival Jacket. You know, if you think back to sort of um, uh, Bravo 2-0 and the SAS uh, patrol that, um, uh, that, you know, that, that ended badly, most of those guys died of hypothermia. Had they had something like this, I think the outcome would have been very different. This is the Blizzard Survival Sleeping Bag. This is what Funky Preppers just um, used on a, an overnighter. Uh, brilliant bit of kit, I've used it myself. And 
the Royal Marine Commando Arctic Warfare uh, Training School in Norway signed this piece of kit off to 14 below zero so it's a great bit of kit as you can see vacuum sealed weighs kind of pretty much next to nothing I'll give you all the specs when I do the video this is uh, another product and it's called the Blizzard Rescue Jacket now this is bright orange uh, pretty much the same as the uh, Blizzard Survival Jacket but this product has sleeves it has transparent um, um, uh, uh, plastic sleeves that are uh, connected to the body of the unit so uh, very simply you can put your hands up inside the sleeve so it's wind and waterproof uh, heat retention is excellent it's bright orange um, so kind of aids uh, rescue and uh, that's another product that I'm going to be putting on the table for you in the next video so this is just a um, kind of roaches reply if you want to ask me uh, specific questions uh, I'll do my best to give you an answer uh, that's it hope you enjoy your Sunday afternoon um, next video we're gonna do gonna be back in the woods we're gonna be talking about the blizzard survival bags as always any comments love to hear them back soon